cryptocurrency security and best practices for protecting your digital assets. There has never been a time when the need to secure digital assets was as significant as it is right now, with institutional interest in cryptocurrencies at an all-time high, corporate treasurers considering allocating funds to Bitcoin, and high, valued digital assets such as NFTs coming into the market. Protecting the organization's private keys should always be a top priority, regardless of the reasons why a particular company might decide to expose itself to the risks associated with digital assets. This entails performing counterparty diligence on an ever-expanding ecosystem of suppliers and technologies, all of which are responsible for the protection of your assets. For the majority of businesses, this entails conducting due diligence on a single vendor. Because of the lack of standardization in these areas, likely, the regulatory posture, internal policies, security procedures, independent financial audits, independent security audits, and custody architecture of these crypto, native specialist firms are significantly different from one another. However, you should make sure that the relative strengths of these providers are in line with the requirements that are unique to your business. This is because not all digital assets require the same amount of access or value, added services in addition to the requirements for basic safeguarding. Control and security of digital assets, such as private keys, should be evaluated, with an eye on the eventual requirements for access and liquidity, often known as the use case, because each solution has both strengths and weaknesses. Let's take a more in-depth look at each of these, shall we? Number 9. Never keep your private keys in your possession. It is never a good idea for the alphanumeric code that serves as the key to access a cryptocurrency wallet to be kept in the possession of just one individual or by a single large wallet. And it shouldn't be in the hands of a corporation that doesn't have proper firewalls between its custody, trading, and liquidity services or that mixes customer funds in with the company's assets. A rising number of manufacturers now deploy proper firewalls, have large resources, and bring the technical expertise essential to manage the dangers involved. Keep in mind that if you misplace most types of cryptocurrency, there is no way to get it back, and it is quite unlikely that you will ever be able to. Number 8. Distribute your assets across several different digital wallets. Imagine that you run a hedge fund and that your customers' assets include a cryptocurrency portfolio worth $100 million. You should never keep all $100 million in a single digital wallet. If someone were to hack or otherwise compromise that one wallet, then they would have access to everything. If fraud does take place, distributing funds over several different wallets is a pretty simple strategy to lessen the impact of the loss. It is in your best interest to keep the size of any individual wallet to a minimum and to collaborate with your custodian in the establishment of the most efficient structure during the onboarding process. It is important to continually revisit these assumptions as you scale your business and to consider incorporating governance best practices into your overall risk management and compliance initiative. This is analogous to opening many bank accounts to spread out your assets across multiple institutions. Because Bitcoin is held in digital form, it is susceptible to hacking and other forms of cybercrime, which can result in severe financial losses if the appropriate precautions are not taken. Number 7. Make use of cold wallets in addition to hot wallets. Continuing with the illustration of a hedge fund, let's assume you are in charge of $100 million and wish to engage in some transactions. You don't need the full account amount in the more liquid hot wallet unless you're planning to trade $100 million in a single day. Depending on the approach you take and the size of your portfolio, you might only be trading 1%, 3%, or 5% of it. It is a far more secure method of protecting digital assets if those assets can be stored offline, in a cold wallet and the majority of those assets do not change. This is the same as having a checking account and a savings account, where you store the amount of money you need for day-to-day -day expenses in your checking account, and the excess money in your savings account, where there are fewer transactional services available. Number 6. Put in place measures to protect against danger. When dealing with significant amounts of cryptocurrency, it is necessary to put in place certain fundamental risk management practices. When there is a greater proportion of the asset's value that is put at risk, the corresponding procedures should become more complex. If there is only one person who can make a withdrawal request, approve the transaction, 
and then wire or deliver the currency. For instance, there's no system of checks and balances in place. If the loss of your digital assets might be caused by the actions of just one dishonest person, then it is safe to state that your assets do not have enough security. When it comes to blockchain technology, the idea of removing a system's reliance on a single point of failure is fundamental. Under these circumstances, why should protecting your private keys be any different? Number 5. Employ specialty vendors to assist in the protection of your assets. Hedge funds and other entities responsible for the management of customer cryptocurrency should carefully consider whether or not to employ the services of a vendor who possesses the specialized controls, expertise, personnel, infrastructure, and financial position necessary to safeguard those funds. In recent years, several new vendors have entered the market with the primary goal of doing ongoing anti-money laundering, AML, and know your customer, KYC, checks, in addition to other compliance and administrative tasks, so that you can continue to concentrate on your primary business. In addition, new third-party companies that act as specialized custodians for digital assets have developed to serve the cryptocurrency market. They have the resources necessary to help you meet the regulatory requirements for custody and can provide independent accounting and audits of your assets. Number 4. Ensure that you have done your research regarding safety. Learn about the current security environment of your digital assets, regardless of whether the protection is provided in-house or by a third-party provider. Number 3. Make certain that vendors offer indemnification. This is because of errors, omissions, failures to perform, or negligent behavior on the part of a vendor in managing cryptocurrency funds. You need to ensure that your contracts have robust indemnity provisions built into the back end of them so that they can also defend your interests. The widespread misconception that outsourcing removes a company from liability is held by many businesses, even though this is not the case. Number 2. Make sure there is appropriate governance at the board level. The risk management process should involve the directors and executives of any company that deals in cryptocurrencies. Number 1. Check with a professional insurance broker specializing in your area. In this quickly changing ecosystem, adhering to some fundamental best practices will not only help you avoid catastrophic consequences, but it can also serve as one of the most critical and significant competitive advantages you can carry with you. When you're working with an industry that's undergoing disruption, you must find a broker who can match you with insurance and risk management. Advice that's properly targeted to your unique company. This is exactly what a competent broker provides. If something goes wrong, they can also instruct you on the process of filing a claim. In addition, if you work with a broker who is knowledgeable about the convergence of technology and financial services, they will be able to highlight potential areas of risk that you may not have yet thought about. A good governance system requires the board of directors and the C-suite to take responsibility for ensuring that the relevant questions are asked and that the necessary continuing oversight is carried out. You will not be protected from financial losses or legal responsibility by burying your head in the sand. How was the video? Do you like it? Post your precious feedback in our comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.